Some things we can't get wet. You know, some things you don't want to put into a uh, moist environment, some instrumentation and things like that, maybe. Glassware sometimes. You can use dry heat, an oven between 180 and 200 degrees will work to kill most bacteria and endospores if the exposure at this temperature is for at least two hours. So if we expose our glassware or other things at a temperature of 180 to 200 degrees for a couple hours, it's going to kill endospores and bacteria to give us sterile equipment. This is a dry heat technique. We wouldn't use this for our media. You put a flask of media in an oven for two hours, when you come back, most of that media will have evaporated out. Or at least most of the water will have. Other types of uh, physical treatment, radiation. So we can radiate the microbes using uh, different types of radiation. Your book talks about gamma radiation. UV radiation can be used as well. <clears throat> Microwave radiation doesn't kill bacteria, doesn't kill microbes. Microwaves don't. But we're told that we can put our sponge in the microwave to kill the bacteria. Well, you can. But it's not the microwaves that are killing the bacteria. If your sponge is wet, the microwaves heat up the sponge and it's the heat from the microwaves that will kill the bacteria. But the microwaves themselves do not damage the cells. Okay. It's the heat that is generated from the microwaves. Okay, so let's talk about some chemicals now. The use of chemicals in controlling microbial growth. When we use chemicals, we're pretty much using them to disinfect. Sometimes we might be using them to sterilize. Uh, generally, the chemicals are going to attack the cells, either disrupt the cell membrane, uh, disrupt protein synthesis, affect proteins, uh, attack the cell wall, do damage to the cell in some way when we're using chemicals. So we have to realize that we too are composed of cells and so chemicals that we might use to kill bacteria might also kill our cells. <coughs> With that in mind, any uh, chemical that you're going to use to kill bacteria, things that you need to consider, the toxicity of those chemicals. Just because you've wiped down the surface doesn't mean the residue from those uh, chemicals isn't still there. So you'll need to consider that. You know, what is the activity of the chemical with regards to other things that it might come in contact, other uh, organic matter, uh, in general, but <clears throat> and what is its compatibility with other things that you might have in your environment that you might be using? What's its cost? Ideally, we're going to want to choose the least expensive agent that's going to get the job done. Bleach is something that's very inexpensive and is very good at sterilizing. So something that is probably in every household simply because of that. You know, storage, how well does it store, how stable is it? All things that we want to consider when choosing a chemical that we would use for cleaning or controlling microbial growth. So I brought some with me just so we can get an idea of what we have available here. Isopropyl alcohol, or alcohol in general, is an agent that we use for killing bacteria. It doesn't sterilize anything, and 
depending on the concentration you're using, the amount of bacteria can kill will vary. The alcohol itself disrupts cell membranes, kills vegetative cells in doing so, but it does not kill endospores. So it's not going to be very effective in killing endospores. What else we have in here? Um, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is another household item that most of you probably have, and uh, you've been told that it works good as an antiseptic on scrapes and things like that. And to a certain extent it does, but it works better on uh, inanimate surfaces to kill bacteria. And here's why. Hydrogen peroxide is easily broken down by an enzyme called catalase. And aerobic organisms produce catalase, and our own cells produce catalase to break down hydrogen peroxide. So when you pour hydrogen peroxide on a scrape or something like that, and you see a bubble, the bubbling is because of the catalase enzyme that our cells are producing that breaks it down. So it's not as effective as at killing aerobic organisms as maybe other things are. But it still is effective at killing anaerobic organisms, because they don't produce the catalase like aerobic organisms. So uh, many of the soil microbes, Clostridium is the one that you should always come to when I talk about anaerobic soil microbes. Those would probably be killed by exposure to H2O2. So it would be effective against some soil microbes, but not necessarily effective against all microbes. So uh, Lysol here, this has hydrogen chloride in it. So it's an acidic uh, compound that affect the, the membrane of the cell. Now here's what I, I want to point out about this. It says here, kills 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. 99.9%. I know we don't know what the D time is, but that whatever the D time is means that um, you're going to have at least a uh, three time exposure to this. Okay. So if we look on here, it says in the back, exposed for 10 minutes. So we could ex we can assume then that the, the D value is probably about three minutes and 33 seconds just based on the information they get here. And here's why I say that. If we agree that they can reduce the amount of microbes, and they're saying viruses and bacteria by 99.9%, that means that, let's say, if we started at 1,000 cells, <clears throat> if their D value is 3 minutes and 33 seconds, then by the time we get down to one cell, we should be at 10 minutes, shouldn't we? Isn't this a 99.9% .9 reduction from 1,000 to 1? And didn't we reduce it 90% each time in 3 minutes and 33 seconds? Isn't that a total of 10 minutes? So one of the things that we have to realize when we're, anytime we're using a cleaner, is that there may be a requirement for exposure to reach the kill that they label or that they put up there. So Kirkland wipes here. These guys also make that same claim, that they kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria just bacteria, they don't, they don't mention viruses here. And they say they do it in 15 seconds. Okay, so kill rate is pretty good on this stuff. What is it? Well, it's a dimethyl ethyl benzyl ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is known as a cot. And these chemicals here do two things. Okay? First, they can disrupt 
the, the cell membrane and protein synthesis as well because they adhere to the cells. But in addition to that, they serve as a uh, surfactant, if you will, in that they uh, reduce the surface tension that the cells have on the surface so that they're more easily removed from the surface, so they can be lifted up and removed from the surface. So this particular product here does two things. It removes them by lifting them from the surface and it kills them at the same time. And so that, that might be why we see such a high kill rate after 15 seconds. Uh, I know many of these say five minutes, say the exposure time is five minutes. So if you were to get that kind of kill rate, 99.9%, you'd have to have the towel of you wiping the surface for five minutes in order to get that kind of kill rate. Running out of stuff here. Oh, hand soap, antibacterial hand soap. I, this has trichloacin, and I didn't know what that was, so I had to look it up. Uh, it's an antibacterial, antifungal agent that uh, works as a biocide in high concentrations, will disrupt the cytoplasmic membrane. In low concentrations, it inhibits fatty acid synthesis. So it doesn't kill the microbes, just inhibits their growth in, in a lower concentration. <coughs> And this is, uh, of course, a hand soap, and you would expect that the concentrations are probably fairly low uh, with regards to trichloroxan. Um, generally, with hand soaps, the, you'll find that they also have surfactant soaps that will help loosen the surface tension so that the bacteria are mechanically removed, uh, as well as, in this case, an agent that's gonna kill the bacteria. I think I got one more thing in here. Uh, Mr. Clean, this hair doesn't kill bacteria at all. It's not an antibacterial, antimicrobial agent. It is just a cleaner. And so it's just going to serve to break the surface tension and allow for you to remove microbes in that way, but it's not going to kill anything necessarily. A couple of things uh, I didn't have that I didn't bring with me that I'll go ahead and put up here. Halogens, this is chloride and iodide. What are halogens? Halogens. So that's, the, that's the periodic table, the halogens on the periodic table. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so chloride and, and iodine, these things can work to uh, kill endospores, um, except for iodine doesn't, uh, chloride does. And then, <clears throat> um, I should mention that we've used this in treatment of wastewater, great at killing endospores and bacteria. This is an antiseptic that we'd use on the skin, not as uh, damaging to cells, but it is effective in killing microbes, attacks the cell membrane, I think that's it for the chemicals that I wanted to mention to you. I have a short little YouTube video I want to I want you to watch. So let me set that up here real quick.